I'm sorry. He's fully flighted? Uh, yeah, he has his wings. Okay. They're kind of haggard, but okay. I don't know. Why. I was just wondering, he was looking like he was going to See, I see how, how she has 100% of this attention. This is really good. Okay, so go ahead and just do a couple of targets. I want to see where, where you are. All this body language is very <laughs> excited, if I had to put a human term to it. Okay, so take a big step back for a second. Here's the first lesson. A treat should be the size of a pine nut or an almond cut into eight pieces. There's a lot of reasons for that, but you can get eight times the training per treat <laughs> uh, if the treat size is a little bit smaller. Do you want me to switch to uh, sunflowers? We'll come back to that. Just go ahead and just keep those pretty small for now. Do you need me to chop them up? Yeah, I was this morning. Why don't you take that one that's kind of smaller, those, and go ahead and Jamie can help you on that while I cut these. Yeah, he might. Does he take pine nuts at all? I don't think he's ever had them. Okay. So I'm going to give you a few. You can just try one. <clears throat> so Dave, I feel like while he's at this higher motivation, we should implement the man stuff. Okay. Yeah, this is why. <laughs> this is why we want smaller treats. But try a pine nut this time. Okay. And does he do a spin at all? Um. Let me step back here for a second. And I'm gonna step in and try to take over for a moment and then we'll debrief a little bit of it. Okay. Right. See how the body language is immediately different for a second? I showed him the treats to say, hey bud, we speak the same language. Good. What'd you give him? Piece of almond. So the target training tells this bird, since you already trained it, that I speak the same language. As long as I don't break that trust, I stand a good chance at having a relationship with this bird. Okay, so that's one of the main reasons why this is such a powerful tool. This bird's never met me. So we're gonna see if we can start working on the spin, which he's may not do since he doesn't have any trust with me yet. So for him to turn his back to me is asking a bit much. Um, Definitely still wants to work with Yeah. Do you want to see if he'll target for him? Sure. So I'll have you stand over here, kind of out of his immediate bubble for now. Sure. I'll give you the stick. As I talked about yesterday, whenever you have somebody else doing the targeting, you maintain the control of the clicker. Okay, so go ahead and slowly approach. Don't go too close. Mm -hmm. You can always go closer. I can, please raise it. I will. Okay, I gotcha. Perfect. But for your husband, don't give him the clicker too, because people can't usually process all of it at the same time until they've got a few repetitions in and they understand it. But if you if you click at the wrong time, like let's say he touches a stick and then you click late as he's biting you, you're putting biting on here. So it's important that the person working with the bird, just take that, take the clicker away from them if you're helping somebody else. So yeah, so this rep, go ahead and have, so we go in for a target and I'll have you click. Great. And then slowly approach with the treat. Make sure he sees it and it's not the same hand as a stick. Oh. <laughs> Nice. Okay. He's very gentle with yeah. the guys. Yeah. I'll go ahead and take that back. Awesome. Nice. He gives. He's like, you guys are more?
Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I'm sure you can do this as well. I'll, I'll deliver the treat, you can play. Can I become slightly closer with the clicker? <laughs> got excited to see her. Good. All right, Shane, I'll take the stick back and you can go and have a seat. Awesome. So go and have a seat as well. So a lot of amazing things just happened there. This is a bird that, uh, you know, doesn't like men. And it just did target training for three brand new strangers that are men. So the important thing to take away from this is recognizing how the tool of training is that common language. It's like going to China when you know how to speak Mandarin, right? If you go there only speaking Spanish, you're going to have struggle and have misunderstandings, right? And so that's a, it's a, just a great way to get the birds to fully understand what you're trying to say and start to establish that men are okay. Remember, just like with our birds, just go ahead and go in slowly towards them until he touches the end. Okay, now he did that a little more aggressive than I would have liked. So I'm going to help guide her through this. So we're going to go in slowly. Oh, sorry, he's still eating. Okay, so I'm going to remind him we have some treats. We're going to go in very slowly. Very, very slowly. Until he reaches for it. Try there. Right there. Perfect. Awesome. So you can do that same technique even with kids, right? You said you have a 10 year old that the bird has some misunderstandings with. And so you can see how I handled that situation. The first one was aggressive, and that's because I didn't guide her through properly what I needed to see. The second time, I, I just managed to make sure that she approached slowly, and there was a clear communication. The bird saw that it was earning treats. You could tell that he had some reservation towards a kid. Um, if I only clicked and reinforced every time the bird bit aggressively, we're pairing the emotion of aggression with the trick of touching the stick. So as we said on Friday, when you're training a new behavior, that you're pairing the emotional state that that animal is in with, with that moment, with that trick. So we essentially, had we done too many repetitions wrong, we would have put aggressive, uh, uh, aggressively touching a stick on cue, which is not what we want. We want to put a nice, calm feeling into the training session. Okay. So if you're okay, can I have you go ahead and put him away for a sec? And then just give him a small treat for going back in the carrier. Small treat. Yeah. So when you lead him in, tip down versus up. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. And close it. Close it. Good job. Perfect. Did that make sense? So you're kind of like... Dipping in. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Making it easier because every time you went in, you kind of went up. And so he was like, so I'm going back out. Gotcha. So it's just a little... And Capri's like, also recommending you can throw a treat in the cage first. <laughs> and then put the bird there and the bird's gonna see the treat and go for it. Yeah. So every time the bird goes in there, it's understanding that I get a treat for going here because every interaction is a training session. You want to increase the likelihood that that bird's willing to go in the into the cage, throw a treat in, and then it, it'll just always know. Perfect, that's great, Since the issue is men, I want to try to get him to learn a certain behavior that your husband can cue. Okay. So if I can train it, I'll transfer the cue to you, okay. and then you'll do the same thing with your husband. Okay. And do you want to just see if he'll, like, I would love to see if he is interested in stepping up for you. I don't want to. Well, I know you'll be able to see it really obvious. I just want to show before and after he hasn't done anything wrong. No. <laughs> that was enough. Hopefully, people me. understand. I don't. I haven't seen. That's the thing. Is like I haven't earned. 
I don't, I don't know this bird enough, so I'm not going to push anything that I don't want to unless my wife pushes me. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay, so see how that was more aggressive? Yeah. That would have been my finger. I wasn't saying get nailed. It was like just to make it a little bit more obvious for people that he doesn't want to. Turn a little bit. His eyes are pinning. <laughs> okay, so I didn't click on that intentionally because I had a feeling he was going to be a little more aggressive with it. And I did do it, so I'm going to treat it. But I'm careful not to click when it's more aggressive. So, because what I'm trying to get into is a spin, because I'm getting that aggressive bite, I'm going to get rid of that before I progress on the spin. So to get rid of that, as you guys all saw in the beginning, you approach from a distance and slowly go forward. So that'll be from here. Now watch, pay really close attention now. He's not going to quite be able to reach. There. See how it was just barely close enough? Yeah, there's no way I can pick My him up right now. My camera can't focus on him. Back to the side. Is it glaring? Yeah. You're glaring. Can you see it? He's like, if he could flip me off, he just would have. <laughs> <laughs> Part of it, I think, is my presence just being too close, so I'm going to try to keep a little bit more physical distance. I'm distracting him. <clears throat> body shift, I lost his attention, quick reminder. Okay. So I'm going to pause for a sec because you can see how I've got him calmed down a little bit but not where it originally was when we started the day. <coughs> so it could be for a number of reasons, I don't know for sure which it is yet, but he needs a few two to five minute sessions with me before I can get him further. I'll He's do it saying. for the whole bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what he did when, that's what he does. It's like he wants to fly. Mm -hmm. He's like, not know, quite confident he's, enough to do yeah, it. And he'll fly down. Mm -hmm. um, again, except when he was in the yard, he flew across the yard. Yeah. And when he's on the ground and you're saying he's, he attacks mm -hmm. and everything, do you put him on the ground or does he end up flying to the ground? Um, sometimes, I guess the previous owner, I mean, he, he was a floor bird for 18 years, 16 okay. years. So he had apparently just had, basically had run of the house, um, and just kind of foraged around all over the place, but he had a cage on every floor, <laughs> apparently, so you know him. But yeah, he'll fly down from his perch when uh -huh. he wants to, but it's very rare. <coughs> Sometimes we'll just put him on the floor and just... You guys see his body language? Yeah. See how he looks interested in this again? Yeah. It's what we refer to as opportunistic training. If you remember from Friday, what we just did was, that was just minus punishment, meaning I took away something he wanted, happened to be almonds, not intentionally, but us removing the training session took away something he wanted to earn, so I got his focus back. So anytime you accidentally use negative punishment, you want to follow it up with positive reinforcement, see how much softer that was? So negative punishment on its own, will cause a very frustrated bird. Recognizing that there was negative punishment should always be followed up with positive reinforcement. So again, negative punishment is minus punishment. You're subtracting something that's decreasing a behavior. So you can see again, he's showing interest. 
Almost like he's like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Right? All of this now is a calmer target, and that's what I want more of. He's also noticed where he shifted which direction he is on the perch. This is giving me clear indications I might be able to get a spin out of him, which is my goal by the end of the day. I'm going to have him come that way, so that's a partial spin. I'll take it. Ooh. I evil eye. You had a flashy <laughs> eye. Oh. He gave you the bird, didn't he? He did. His eye literally flashed. So we'll wait. Recognizing all those little signs is critical. I would have got nailed if I continued to go forward with the treat. So even though he did the right behavior, he chose not to take the treat. And then you dropping it was just the, okay, then you can't have it. It, it was not intentional that I dropped oh, okay. it. Okay. <laughs> I think it was a flight. stunned, huh? <laughs> <laughs> your flight kicking in. Now, was the bird's pupils like pinhole? She saw it pin. I didn't. Went, I saw went. the rest of the body language. I, I lost the. There's a laser focus that he's had as he's going for the trees. And I lost it for a millisecond. And that told me he's thinking, I'll nail you. Or whatever he's thinking, it wasn't food anymore. So, we'll wait. We'll give it another chance a little bit later. See how interested the bird is, like, really focused on what's about to happen? Yeah. This is all good. <laughs> He's already anticipating that. So what she's doing is she's approaching the bird, can't quite reach, can't quite reach, barely approaching, it reaches it. She's not putting it in, the bird can just crunch it. She starts at a further distance and slowly goes forward. So now, what I want to have her do is give you the stick. She'll keep the clicker. So I'll have you kind of take her spot. So you you need a tree, so go ahead and just slowly go forward, get ready to click. Good. And remove the stick. Perfect. Uh, in a moment, so go ahead and just keep the stick down for a sec. We're gonna wait till he's done eating. And we'll just keep it really simple for him right now. What we're trying to do is associate that you with the stick is the same promise that you'll get a treat as it is with her with the stick. Okay, so now I'm going to slowly reach up with the stick and slowly approach. Slowly, slowly, and click. Remove the stick. Perfect. So just with that little technique, you could use that to get him to go back into the cage. And it seems like at first, like, why do I want my bird to touch you on the stick? That sounds sexy or cool. But it teaches you the same language as a family so that you can all communicate with this bird that, hey, I promise you, if you do this, you get this. And now there's a way to communicate what you want, and the bird can clearly communicate, yeah, I'd do that, or no, I don't want it right now. Repetition, so. Well, yeah, there's definitely repetition in it, but it's a, it's a promise, right? It's, it's a promise that, that if you do what I expect you to, you get a treat. And it gives the bird the opportunity to say, like, no, I don't really want to. Well, why not? Well, maybe the bird's too full, so come back later when the bird's hungry. Hey, do you want to touch it now? Yeah, and then it starts to just form trust and clear communication, and that'll that will really help you have a better um, bond with this bird. Down the road. So let's go and do uh, one more repetition with you. So approach very slowly, going straight forward, and. Yep, remove the stick. Perfect. So the second that he touches it, you'll hear the click. Once you hear that, go ahead and remove the stick. And it's all it's all right now because the bird's learning, it's all pretty slow speed. So let's see it's your ten year old that Piper. That's uh Piper. Yeah. So this bird doesn't like you. 
Not so much? Alright, so I'm going to have you switch spots with your dad. And go ahead and put the signal down by your side for a sec. Okay? I'm going to let your mom explain what's going to happen. So we're going to take the stick and we're just going to go in really slowly from the other end. Just barely so you can reach out and touch it. You don't want to go too fast. You don't want to go in so close that he like, grabs it. You want to get grabbed and grabbed. Okay, so just enough so he can touch it. Okay. When he touches it, and then you would move the stick and make sense? Okay. Perfect. Right. A little bit closer so I can reach. Good. Now move the stick. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. You want to try again? And just to, just to clean up, everything is, looks really good. Try to try to just relax. And when you're standing there fidgeting with a stick, it's he's like, wait, what 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 do I do? What do I do? He's watching you with the stick. You're like a wizard with a magic wand here. So just <laughs> as you stand there, just, just try to try to relax and stop. So when you guys are ready, it's on your call. That was perfect. Yeah. And your older daughter, what's your name? Riley. Riley, do you want to give a shot? Okay. Your mom's gonna guide you through what to do and not do here as well. See if you can get him to come to this side of the perch. What, what's he done with the treat? Flakes <laughs> now. So just go to the opposite side he's on now. Yes. Perfect. All right. So Jennifer, if you want to take the stick back. Thank you girls and everybody for helping. So that that really is the very beginning of how to make it so that this bird understands the expectation with everybody in the house. Every interaction, the bird's learning. Whether you like it or not, you're either gonna get more good behavior or bad behavior. But it's up to you guys as a family to look at that and say like, okay, how can we get more of the good behavior? And that's through, through this kind of stuff. And we'll teach you more, but this is a very powerful tool to start with. Good boy, Nico. Good boy. Can you do that? 